Hello, my name is Dr. Paul Herkel. I'm a naturopathic doctor, I practice in Toronto, and I'm the medical director for AOR. Today we're going to spend the next five minutes just learning about AOR's pro-de-stress formulation. Pro-de-stress is a quite straightforward formulation where you're going to have GABA, L-theanine, and holy basil. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about why this formulation was created. Really, this whole, the rationale behind this formula was having acute relief, but combining it with also a fast-acting, more adaptogenic herbal approach. I think the majority of the formulations that are available are some sort of combination of GABA, theanine, 5-HDP. We really wanted to create this formula for a lot of the patients that we all see in our practice, those excess sympathetic tone patients. So really, theanine GABA will have a fast-acting effect, and then holy basil will kind of work in, have a bit of a fast-acting effect as well, but also have a more adaptogenic effect, addressing the more tired and wired, phase two adrenal dysfunction, and obviously the anxiety and insomnia. We'll talk a little bit more about each one of these particular ingredients. <clears throat> So how does it work? I mean, we've all heard of GABA before. Anybody that's used GABA in practice knows that it has a calming effect on, on most people. Some people don't have uh, any sort of results from it. And there's a number of reasons um, people think or scientists think why it works. One of the big cons is, is that does it really cross the blood-brain barrier? The mechanism is still quite unclear in the literature. There's actually positive and also kind of conflicting animal evidence. Uh, and when you look at it, you can see that here again, the blood-brain barrier, the astrocytes in the brain, they really are selective of what they let into the, into, uh, <clears throat> the central nervous system. And GABA is a fairly big molecule. Um, so let's take a look. You know, what does the literature say? There's kind of three theories of, of how it works. One of them is, is that there's actually evidence uh, in those animal studies showing that there is a GABA transporter in the brain. Uh, and this actually actively transports GABA from the bloodstream into the central nervous system where it can have its very inhibitory calming effect. There's also the, the idea that GABA gets through because a person has a leaky brain. So uh, increased blood-brain barrier permeability. Some docs, clinicians will use it as kind of a pseudo-clinical test. Take some GABA, do you notice a difference? If you do, then you probably have leaky brain, so we have to work on that. Um, I, I think I subscribe probably most to the third theory and, and really understanding what we now know about the microbiome and, and still what we really don't know. What's very clear is that there's this huge gut-brain connection. Uh, and no doubt there's blood-brain barrier permeability, um, but I think GABA also has a substantial amount of evidence showing that it, its effect can occur peripherally and in the enteric nervous system via the vagus nerve. We know that the microbiome, like for example this probiotic, can increase GABA receptor production. And so GABA also has some evidence to show that it decreases cortisol. So I think it has a peripheral effect uh, and the, the, the times you'll find it used in practice, it, it actually has a, a very substantial calming effect on probably 75% of the people um, and about 25% don't have that effect. And that could be for num numer numerous reasons. Number of different indications, primarily I would say anxiety, insomnia, and any, uh, any sort of excess neurological, uh, neurogenic um, activity like ep epilepsy, it can have kind of a calming effect. Growth hormone and anterior pituitary secretion, that's really um, one or two older studies and really bodybuilders are the ones that focus on that. Um, clinically, I don't think we'll find the benefits there. Theanine often gets overshadowed by GABA, but theanine is one of those really, really neat amino acids naturally found in green tea, uh, kind of giving tea that calming effect, even though there's caffeine in it. It has this unique ability to do both a relaxed and alert state, which we'll talk about in just a second. But not just increasing GABA, which is obviously what GABA does, but it also raises dopamine, serotonin, as well as GABA. So it has this kind of calming, but also focused effect. And anybody that studied for exams while maybe in school, theanine was usually an a amino acid of choice for students. But how does it have this relaxed and focused effect? Uh, and really it comes down to its function on the glutamate receptor, specifically the NMDA receptor in the brain. 
So this is a receptor specifically for glutamate and it promotes kind of neural activity. And so that is definitely the focus, but you know, you might be thinking, well, hold on here. I thought that overstimulation is bad. Well, that's absolutely right. You know, MSG, monosodium glutamate. But similar to the way phytoestrogens work, theanine is kind of a more gentle modulator of that receptor. So it actually prevents something like MSG or even caffeine on other uh, receptors in the brain. It prevents that overstimulation. So that's how it has a focused effect as well as increasing amino acids like GABA, which has a, a calming effect. So a really neat balancing effect to theanine. Like GABA, has a very, very uh, short half-life. So the peak plasma levels in 30 to 40 minutes. So that's what you can tell your patients. You know, in 30 minutes, you should get an effect. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about dosing to find that optimal dose. Unlike GABA, the, this amino acid um, easily is transferred through the brain, through the neutral amino acid transporter, um, so you're going to get good bioavailability. So, theanine, we know that the indications for anxiety and insomnia are there, but the thing that I find even more interesting is some of the other indications for theanine. I mean, anybody that does any sort of integrative cancer care um, might actually have seen some evidence to show that immune function, um, reducing chemotoxicity and increasing some chemo uh, activity um, without increasing a side effects, um, actually decreasing them. And I think the contribu uh, the, how it contributes to the formation of glutathione with cysteine is kind of one of those overlooked steps. While cysteine is the rate limiting step, theanine also contributes uh, the glutamate piece. So I think that's a, another a really interesting addition to theanine, something that something like GABA does not um, have. So really nice additional benefit. And finally, de-stress contains holy basil. Holy basil has a number of really powerful antioxidant molecules, um, ursolic acid and eugenol, probably the ones most well known. Really impressed by the clinical literature uh, supporting the effect of holy basil. 15 human clinical studies on lowering blood sugar. Think of all your patients that struggle with blood sugar and are also stressed. This is a very unique property of holy basil. Kind of that reactive hypoglycemia, uh, you know, cravings. Holy basil will, will address that. Powerful antiviral, anti-inflammatory, so virus specifically. And also, its effect on anxiety, um, stress, insomnia, mood, memory. There's four human clinical studies. I mean, you can see them summarized right here. But you can see just some of the, you know, some of the, um, the subjects in the studies. 150 uh, reduction in fatigue, um, sleep, and sexual problems were reduced um, after, you know, six weeks, four weeks. It has a very, very um, substantial effect. So a really, really well-studied herb, probably much more studied than something like Eleutherococcus or any other um, adaptogen uh, because those uh, particular herbs really have a lot of Asian TCM indications, Asian medicine, but not nearly as much as holy basil. Um, so how do we use this formulation? You know, it has a very acute action uh, and you can see GABA and theanine being primarily the, the ones that do that, but holy basil it adds that kind of adaptogenic effect long term. So you can really rest assured that you're addressing both the underlying cause and giving symptomatic relief. Uh, obviously we talked about insomnia, anxiety, those types of things are probably the classic indications, but think of it, you're in your wired and tired excess sympathetic tone patients. It's a great formulation to start off with as you then you move to something a little bit more heavier on the adaptogenic like ProAdapt, um, combining this with a B complex in the, with this in the morning and Bs in the morning. Also, uh, Procogni cofactors, your magnesium glycinate, your active Bs, and zinc, a phenomenal foundational uh, formulation for the brain. Uh, dosage. Dosage is uh, something that can actually be ramped up and personalized to the patient. Um, really, it's up to six capsules a day, and that's based on the maximum theanine dose. Um, when you look at the doses in each one uh, of the ingredients, actually quite generous doses, especially on the theanine. The theanine in the standalone AOR Pro Theanine, you're looking at 225 milligrams. So this is actually a higher dose in a combination. 
Unlike the standalone GABA that AOR uses in the retail line, that formulation is 600 milligrams. And this here is 100 milligrams. And in fact, I specifically like it that way because GABA can sometimes cause some headaches for some people. So going to that very high dose, you might miss actually the dosing sweet spot. So what I suggest with a formula like this is you start one or two a day, one in the morning, um, one in the evening, and then you can slowly increase one in the morning, two in the evening until a person finds they have that, that effect that they're looking for, that calming effect. And ideally, any herbals or amino acids should be taken ideally away from food. So empty stomach would probably give you the best absorption. Hopefully you found this helpful uh, and stay tuned for uh, more products that we, uh, we detail in the future. Good luck in your practice.